Hi, Maymay. Hi, Walter. Uh, welcome to the next Puppy Pod. This is going to be an exciting climax to the Live Forever Machine. Now, if you remember, we just showed you episode one of the Live Forever Machine. This is episode two, the final climax, final ending to the story. So you may remember in episode one, Walter got a strange phone call from inside of Erie Elementary. Huh? He's inside of Erie Elementary where some very strange things are going on. Like there's holes opening up in the floor and there's weird sounds. And so the puppies decide that they're going to go investigate. They go in to Erie Elementary and strange things start happening to them, to their you know, physical appearance. Maymay all of a sudden becomes a 75-year-old woman, a 75-year-old woman. And Walter... A 75, nope, it's not 75 because they're not the same age. A 70 year old man, he's pretty old, and mama is a little girl. She's a little girl. So strange things are happening and nobody recognizes anybody and it's weird. And the puppies decide that we got to look into this. We got to figure out what's going on here. And they decide to go room to room. You may remember they go room to room. And in the first room, who do they see? They see. Calvin and Calvin is laughing and says, ha ha ha, you'll never figure out what we're doing here. We've got a big surprise for you. Ha ha. And then the second room, they see Big Nate. Big Nate, not old Nate. Big Nate. Big Nate. Same thing. He's laughing and he's snickering and he says, oh yeah, you'll never figure out anything. What's going on? In the third room, they see Slappy, most wanted uh, goosebumps. Slappy and sorrow slappy, slappy and sorrow slappy, ventriloquist, but mean and evil ventriloquist. Okay, and so they're all laughing in all these rooms. The people are laughing at the puppies, saying, You'll never guess what's going on. And finally, they walk down the hall a little ways and they see a locked door, and they see a locked door, and they can't get in. But the sorceress was able to open the door with a spell. And inside, they go in and they see who is there. Dr. Bunsen and Data Set. Dr. Bunsen and Data Set and their prisoners. They're captives. They can't get out. Who is prisoner? Imprison them. Who is that? It is, come on, it is Orson Erie. Orson Erie, who is evil and mean. He's a mad scientist, right? And he's an evil guy and a mean guy, and he laughs, and he says, ha ha, I've got you now, puppies. You are now my captives. And he locks the door behind them, and he says, okay, everybody is my prisoner. Everybody is my prisoner. But what <laughs> Erie does not understand is that Mama and the sorceress were not in the room when he locked the door. Mama and the sorceress are not in the room when they locked the door. They're outside trying to figure out how to save the puppies who are inside locked in. And Walter says, okay, what is going on here? And what's going on here? And Bunsen just starts describing what happens. Bunsen says, when we were kids, I grew up with Erie. I grew up with Erie and nobody liked Erie. And the reason nobody liked Erie was because he was always praying these, uh, praying, not praying, playing these pranks and tricks on everybody, on all of our friends and stuff like that. People didn't like him. They liked me a lot, but they didn't like him. And what happened was because we're both scientists, we're mad, he's mad scientist. I'm like not mad at all. I'm like a regular scientist, but a good one. I invented the prototype for the Live Forever machine. And then Erie stole it. He stole it. He built the machine. And now he lives forever. And he doesn't let anybody else live forever because he controls the machine. And he decided to live forever as an elementary school. Don't ask me how that works out, but Erie is an elementary school. So Erie Elementary is Erie. God knows 
you know, how you figure that out, but that's the story. Okay. So now at the end of episode one, you've got the puppies, Bunsen, data set, all prisoner of Orson Erie and Mama and the sorceress on the outside trying to figure out what's going on. And so Mama turns to the sorceress and says, see if you can, um, see if you can open this lock and get us in. And she did. She had done it once before, but she couldn't do it. And she said, okay, can you try to change the whole school? If you change the school, then you change Erie. Can you change the school? Train it, change it to a friendly, nice place. And the sorceress tries to do that, but that doesn't work either. And they hear Erie laughing inside the room going, ha, 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 none of these spells will work on me. You are going to lose. You're my prisoner. So Mama and the sorceress decide they're going to keep walking around here. Maybe they can come on a clue for a path to figure out how they're going to save these people and get rid of Erie. And they're walking around the school, and they look at a wall. They see on the wall is a plaque, well, a, a certificate. And the certificate says, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Erie Elementary, Baseball and Softball, champions baseball and softball champions right mama figures what this school where they know how to play baseball and softball so well that they were the state champions last year hmm that gives me an idea so mama thinks i know of a baseball of a softball team that we can challenge erie and He's so competitive, he will accept the challenge, but the stakes are not low. The stakes are very high. If we win, then he frees everybody, and the school becomes a friendly, welcoming place, and he goes away. But if we lose, if we lose, oh, don't even think about it. If we lose, we all become prisoners of evil, mean, Orson Erie. So Mama goes back to the room, calls him up on the phone, presents the the, uh, the idea, and Erie being so competitive, he agrees immediately. He agrees, that, yeah, let's go, fine, fine. So they set up the game the next day at Lawrence Field. Where else? Lawrence Field. Okay, so the next day, uh, um, uh, <laughs> Mama and the sorcerers get to the field, and already Erie's team is there. And in first base, you've got Calvin. Second base, you've got Big Nate. Third base, you've got Slappy, shortstop, you've got son of Slappy, and on the mound as the pitcher is Orson Erie, and he's unbelievably fast. His pitchers are like 90 miles an hour. They just shoot by you like bullets. You can't even see them. And But Mama is not afraid, not afraid, because she has a few secret weapons. Her team takes the field, and they're not the puppies. They're not the puppies. They are actually the sixth graders from Beaver Country Day School. Beaver, whoop, look out, Beaver Country Day School, right? So they take the field, and it's the Beaver sixth graders. And here they are. Here's a couple of them anyway, and you may recognize this one. This one looks like Maymay, and in fact, it is Maymay, but it's Maymay in disguise. It's in disguise. It's not in, she's not in her super heroine outfit, the cuppy, the cup, not the cuppies, the puppies, the puppy outfit, right? Where she's 10 feet tall and strong and a super heroine. No, this is Maymay as like a regular person, regular young lady, right? Who is playing softball for Beaver. And except when she doesn't play softball, because she's got a cast on her no, a boot or a cast or whatever, but she's hobbling around. So, but when she does play, she's excellent. And so are all of her teammates, and they take the field. Okay, now you've got Erie Elementary against Beaver. Against Beaver. Okay, against Beaver. Right. Okay. And the game is tight. The game is very tight. There's no score. Inning after inning after inning. In fact, Beaver doesn't even get any hits. No hits. Beaver gets no hits. Wait a minute. I got to get a hit here. No hits. Okay. Beaver has no hits and I'm losing everything. Everything. 
Okay, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Computers, they can drive you crazy. Okay, okay. So no hits, right? And Bieber is no hits. And they come right up into the last inning, the ninth inning or seventh inning or whatever it is. But the last inning, it's all tied, zero to zero. And Erie bats first. And they load the bases, first, second, and third. And Calvin, of course, is the one that hits a single and one person scores, and Erie then leads one nothing, and they go into the bottom of the last inning, the bottom of the ninth or the seventh, whatever the last inning is. They go into the bottom of the last inning, and it's the last chance for Beaver, for the puppies, for them to save themselves. Otherwise, if they lose, they all become prisoner of <laughs> mean, evil Orson Erie. Okay, so. Just as they're ready to begin the inning, Mama jumps on the field once again, and she goes, player substitute, player substitute. Erie goes, what? What do you mean, player substitute? This is the team. No, we've got a player substitute. And here she is. And we imported her direct from Italy, direct from Italy. They call her Lolly Palooza. Lolly Palooza or La Palooza. Here she is, right here. Okay, look at that swing. Look at that swing on Lolly Palooza. Okay, right? So Lolly Palooza. Okay, Lolly Palooza gets a single. She hits a single. That's right. So now you've got La Palooza. They call her La Palooza. It's like a nickname, right? All of Italy knows her. She's like fabulous. She's on first base, and uh, <laughs> and Yuri says, okay, all right, well, it's only a person on first base. I can figure this out. I'll strike out the next person. And just as he's ready to pitch, Mama jumps on the field again and goes, player substitute, player substitute. Yuri goes, what? Player substitute? This is your second substitute. How can you have all these substitutes? Mama says, look, this is a player substitute. And I'm gonna. It's gonna take me a minute or so to get the player here. But talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. And here comes the next substitute, the next player substitute. And guess who we have here? Okay, I'm not sure who we have here yet. Okay, and it is a real beaver. A real baseball playing beaver. A real baseball playing beaver, right? Six foot, no, five, eight and a half, actually. It's a beaver, right? Who can catch, who can dance, you know, do a little dancing on the field. Okay, and boom, boom, get out of my way. And boom, 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 he's great. He can bunt, he can bunt, he can hit the long ball, he can hit himself, he does everything well. And Erie, oh, Sorry, forgot this. Erie. Oh, here. <laughs> Erie's really angry now. And Erie says, wait a minute. How can you get a real beaver? That's not a place, a person. It's a, it's a beaver. A real, like a, a six-foot beaver. The unfortunate part is the beaver can't really see too well because, you know, it's very low. His head is... It's like that, right? And the ears, there's no eyes here. Okay. Anyway, but Erie says, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pitch to him anyway. I'll strike him out. Okay. Now, one thing that beavers have are big teeth. Big teeth, not like this. Really big teeth right here. Big, 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 long teeth. Big like a dentist's dream. Okay. Okay. And big, big teeth. So Erie winds up and he throws in the first pitch now. The <laughs> the beaver is has his stance. He gets real close to home plate, and he's leaning over the home home plate to see the pitch better because he's like a beaver and he can't see anything. But his teeth are over the plate, and the pitch comes in and it hits him in his teeth. Huh? It hits him in his teeth. Oh no! Right? But the ball bounces away, and the pitch actually was a good pitch. It was a strike. So the umpire has to figure out. Wait a minute. The pitch was a strike. It hits him in the teeth. 
if a player gets hit with a ball, he's supposed to take first place. But if it's a strike, it's a strike. What do I do? The umpire decides it's more important that the person got hit by the pitch than it was a strike. And so they award first base to Beaver. Okay, now you've got La Palooza, right? The Italian, uh, the, uh, the wonderful Italian player uh, on second and the six foot baseball playing blind <laughs> beaver on first base. Here's the beaver leading off the of first like this, right? I'm trying to threaten to steal, but of course can't see anything. So, you know, tough to, can't, tough to steal second if you can't see second, right? Or if you can't even see like five feet in front of you. Okay, first and second and Okay, Erie says, all right, it doesn't matter. I'll be able to strike out the next batter, and then we'll win the game, and they'll all be my prisoner. <laughs> and then Mama, of course, at that point says, not so fast, big boy. Not so fast, player substitute. Here's another player, player substitute. And Erie says, you can't have another substitute. You've already had another substitute. Mama says, sorry, last substitute. Here it is. Okay. And who is the player substitute? Walter Forkner. Walter Forkner. Previously from the Guardians. Previously from the Guardians. And now on Beaver. He's now on Beaver because he was too good for the Guardians. And he was too good for the Guardians. Now Walter Forkner is playing for Beaver, and he's up. And so Erie says, okay, I don't care. Whoever it is, I'll pitch to him. I'll strike him out. We'll, everybody will be my prisoner. We'll win the game. <laughs> okay. So he throws the first pitch, and it's like 95 miles an hour, and <laughs> goes right past Walter, but it's a strike, right? Throws the second pitch, 95 again. Strike two, strike two. And then Erie becomes a little wild, right? He throws ball one and then ball two, and then ball three, and now you've got three balls and two strikes. <laughs> three balls and two strikes, bottom of the ninth, two out. First and second, the uh, beaver, whatever they are, beaver big teeth, are down one nothing, and it's down to Walter Fortner. And here's what happens. Okay. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Oh, no. I've come this far and I messed it up. Here. Okay. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Walter hits one. A long drive to center field, and it's going to be a hit. La Palooza's down around third. She's coming home to score. Then comes Beaver, and he's tripling, tripping his way around. Walter's on second with a double. La Palooza and the Beaver score, and they win the game. The Beaver wins the game, and everybody is jumping all around. They take Walter, and they – I remember what I did with Walter's picture. Yes, and they take Walter, and they put him on their shoulders, and he they parade him around, and they all go down to what was Erie Elementary, but is no longer Erie Mentorentally. Elementary, when they get there, they see friendly elementary, new school, friendly teachers, nice, welcoming atmosphere, friendly, wonderful kids having fun, enjoying themselves, and Orson Erie is nowhere to be seen. He disappears. And, that, and that's episode two and the final climax of the Live Forever Machine. We love you, May May. We love you, Walter. That's a wrap.